Moving the largest stones up to the necessary height and setting them in place is seemingly one of the most difficult technological feats necessary in the construction of the Great Pyramid. Yet the original builders were without question able to accomplish this task. In the previous video, we saw how these massive stones on barges moved from the Nile River up to the building site during the very earliest stages of construction. These massive payloads, weighing up to 70 tons, accompanied by the barges supporting them, were too large to fit the water locks designed to move much smaller payloads. This is true for the water locks which were built into the casing stones. These most massive stones on barges rose as the pond impounded by the casing stones rose as construction progressed. When it was time to set these massive stones in place, they were already available floating on barges in this pond. Yet the original builders needed to move these huge payloads from the barges to their final resting place. The focus of this video is to depict how that was accomplished. The largest stones on barges were not intended to move up the water locks built into the casing stones. There was much activity occurring on this pond, but our focus in this video is to see how a ceiling stone of the king's chamber was moved from the barges to its final resting place. As construction progressed, the largest stones on barges rose as the pond impounded by the casing stone rose. The task before us is to move a ceiling stone for the king's chamber from the barges and set this massive payload in place on top of the walls of the king's chamber. We can look into the king's chamber and see the coffer already installed inside it. Also, the pond is only waist deep. Additional barges are used to support both ends of the stone. Water is removed from these two barges, causing them to raise up and support the ends of the king's chamber ceiling stone. Spacers are installed between the barges and the ceiling stone. The purpose of these spacers will become apparent in just a few minutes. With the additional support of barges on each end of the stone, these spacers can be installed one at a time without any problems. With the additional buoyancy provided by barges on each end of the stone, Two barges are now lowered by allowing water to enter them, and those two barges are moved out of the way. Now it is time to add additional water to the pond. This will cause the surface of the pond to rise, which will lift the ceiling stone on barges. Now the barges can move over the king's chamber wall. This will allow the ceiling stone to move closer to its final destination. Additional water added to the pond causes it to rise. This pond is impounded by the casing stones that have already been installed. Raising the level of the pond allows the barges to move the ceiling stone closer to its final destination. The spacers placed between the barges and the ceiling stone 
allow the barges to move under the ceiling stones that have already been set in place. Water is now allowed to enter the barges. This causes the ceiling stone to be gently lowered onto the top of the king's chamber walls. Yet the king's chamber ceiling stone is not quite yet at its final destination. There is still more to this fascinating process. The ceiling stone is easily moved right next to a ceiling stone that is already installed. Every aspect of this process is systematic and well organized. The barges floating in the king's chamber must be removed. This is accomplished quickly and easily by using a floating crane. The barges floating in the king's chamber are easily and quickly removed. When all the barges in the king's chamber are moved out of the way, the next step in the process can begin. Two positioning barges are quickly moved in place. These barges are the same that were used to position the casing stones. They will be used to move the ceiling stone to its exact final resting place. Water is allowed to enter these barges so that they rest on the bottom of the waist deep pond. Then water is allowed to enter the auxiliary barges. This causes the ceiling stone to be pushed up against the ceiling stone it is beside. Water is removed from the positioning barges and these barges are quickly moved out of the way. Now it is time to repeat the process and install the next ceiling stone of the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid. Moving a ceiling stone from the barges that support it and then placing that ceiling stone at its final location was actually rather easy. It had to be because it is beyond the scope of human muscles to move these payloads to achieve these results. Simply by adapting readily apparent moving techniques and using water and barges, moving the largest stones is a rather simple and actually quite fast task that was performed by the ancient geniuses. My hope is that someday people in the here and now will eventually catch up to the ancient geniuses who were able to move and set in place these most massive stones to complete their building, which in our day is a wonder of the world. 
The next video will address why the Great Pyramid was built in the pyramid shape, and then this video series will conclude with the information relating to how the Great Pyramid was finished, as well as how the capstone of the Great Pyramid was set in place.